Some Morris Minor owners love the foot-operated dip switch. A few hate it. I've got big feet and sometimes get my foot tangled up with the clutch pedal. Wouldn't it be nice if you could just dip the lights from the indicator stalk? Well, you can. And this video will show you how. This job involves dismantling the dash and steering column and doing some wiring. If you aren't 100% confident with that, there are a few other videos you should watch first. There are links at the end of this video and in the video description. Let's take a look at the dip switch. It's got three wires, blue, which is the headlight power feed. It goes live when we turn on the headlights. Then we have blue and red, which goes to the dip beams, and blue and white, which goes to the main beams. The dip switch just diverts the power from the blue wire to one of the other two. What we're going to do is replace the dip switch with a couple of relays and a flip-flop port. A relay is just an electrically operated switch. If we put 12 volts across the relay coil, the switch flips across. Remove the 12 volts and it flips back. The flip-flop board is very similar. It's a relay controlled by a small electronic circuit. Because it's electronic, we need to power it by earthing pin G and putting 12 volts on pin V. If we then earth pin T, the trigger pin, the relay flips across. But if we stop earthing the trigger pin, it doesn't flip back. As long as the circuit is powered, it stays in that position. If we want it to go back, we need to earth the trigger pin again. So each time we earth the trigger pin, the flip-flop relay reverses position. We can hide the relays inside the dashboard to the right of the driver's side glove box. It would be very fiddly to wire everything up in that position, so we'll build the circuit on a bit of scrap aluminium and then bolt the circuit board in place. This is a test fit of the aluminium. First we'll bolt the two relays in place. Now we'll mount the flip-flop board. That's a bit delicate, so we'll carefully solder some wires to the power supply and trigger pins and attach them to a screw block connector. To mount the board, we'll cut a bit of plastic sheet to the same size and stick three or four layers of 3M double-sided sponge tape to one side and one layer to the other. We'll stick the board to the three-layer side and then stick it all to the aluminium. Finally, we'll use a bit of scrap aluminium to make a strap to hold it down. Now we can take a look at the wiring. The right hand relay replaces the dip switch. So we'll attach the old wiring from the dip switch to here. The headlamp power, which is blue, the wire to the main beams, which is blue and white, and the wire to the dip beams, which is blue and red. If we turn on the headlamps, the dip beams come on. But if we power the relay coil, it flips across and the main beams come on. We'll come back to how we control that relay in a moment. Next, we'll add a push button to the left-hand relay. We'll extend the main beam wire to here, and we'll put a permanent 12 volts on here. Now if we push the button, it connects the 12 volts to the main beams. So when the headlights are off, the button acts as a headlamp flasher. As you've probably guessed, the purpose of the left relay is to determine the function of the push button. We've seen what it does when the headlights are off. Now we need to flip it when the headlights are on. First, we'll earth one end of the coil and we'll extend the headlight power supply to the other end. When we turn the headlights on, the relay flips. So now we can use the button to ground the trigger pin. We put an earth on here and we run a wire from here to the trigger pin. Now, when the headlights are on and we press the button, the trigger pin is earthed. Of course, nothing's going to get triggered yet. First, we need to power the flip-flop. We just earth the G pin and connect the V pin to the blue headlamp feed wire. Now, each time we press the button briefly, the flip-flop terminals reverse.
We can use those terminals to control the right hand relay. We earth one terminal of the relay coil and we connect the other end to one terminal on the flip flop relay. Then we connect the other flip flop terminal to the blue headlamp feed wire. Now each time we press the button, the flip flop will reverse position and dip or undip the headlights. This is the final circuit. There's a link to a downloadable copy in the video description. The circuit draws no power when the headlights are off, so we won't flatten the battery. We've got a headlamp flasher, and with the lights on, a dip switch. Now we can wire up the actual board. First the black earth wire. We connect all the earths to the aluminium sheet. Next the blue headlamp supply. We'll put a piggyback connector here so we can attach the feed from the old dip switch. In the circuit diagram it's connected to the relay, but we'll move it down the wire a bit to stop the relay getting crowded. Next we fit the blue and white main beam wire. Again there's a piggyback terminal here for the old dip switch wire. Next, a green and yellow wire for the flip-flop trigger, and then a yellow wire to the right-hand relay coil. And finally, a push button using a purple and a blue and white wire. Now let's disconnect the battery and remove the foot switch. It's just held in place with a couple of screws. We want to pull the wire out from behind the dash. The plug's too big to fit through the hole in the parcel shelf, so we'll cut it off. We won't need it anyway. We replace the plug with spade terminals. As well as the three wires from the old dip switch, we need to connect a power supply to our circuit board for the headlamp flasher. We can take that from any purple wire under the dash. Purple means an always on fused supply. We connect it here. We don't need a separate earth wire as the aluminium sheet is earth when we bolt it down. Next we connect the three wires from the old dip switch. Blue goes here, blue and white here, blue and red here. Don't shorten the wire in case you or a future owner want to go back to a floor switch. Our new spade terminals will still fit the old switch if necessary. Now we'll mount the aluminium sheet inside the dashboard and bolt it down. We we'll reconnect the battery and test it. With the headlights off, the button is a headlight flasher. With the headlights on, the button is a dip switch. Now there are a few different ways to go from here depending on your personal preferences and what spare parts you can find. If you're happy using just the button, mount it somewhere convenient and you're finished. If you want something a bit fancier, you can buy a lever switch and fit it to the steering column. But by far the best way is to have the dip switch on the indicator stalk. I'll be covering how to do that in next month's video. If you want to know when that becomes available, then just subscribe to this channel by pressing the horn button at the end of the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.